Hi everyone. I thought while I'm walking my dogs, I'll talk a little bit. And uh, it's a little cloudy out here, but I do have my my glasses on. Hi, good to see you, three angels. Good to see you. Um, I want people to understand what's going to be happening on this world. Hi, Dolores. Good to see you. Good to see everybody that's coming in. Share this periscope. We need to get this message out. And I know I haven't done some of these messages for a while because I've been doing on the health, but you know, that's as important too. And I will be doing a lunch scope again and I will be doing an ice cream scope later. But I want everybody to know um, what the, what is happening in this world because so many people do not know what is going to happen because they're not prepared for it. They're not ready because they they think we have lots of time before the world is coming to an end. But I'm here to tell you, we don't have that much time. Things are happening every day that makes it that much closer to Jesus' second coming. And we know this world is not fit to live in. Why would we want people want to live in this world forever and ever and ever, or for a very long time? Look how bad it's getting. I mean, people are being killed for no reason. And it's just not right. I mean, after those London and terrorist attacks and how many they've had, it's going to continue, I'm afraid. As long as sin is allowed to, to be in this world and as long as Satan's in this world, we're going to have things like this happening. People are going to die for no reason. So it's just not worth being here anymore. You know, we have to make the most of it while we're here. I mean, we can be live in the world, but we don't have to be part of it. So we as Seventh-day Adventists, we need to do everything we can not to be part of the world. You know, you have to, like I said, you have to be here. You can't, there's nothing you can do about that until it's your time to go. But as long as you're in this world, you need to get the message out, live the message, tell other people what's going to happen so that they're ready for it too. Because unfortunately, an awful lot of people don't, um, no, they're not. They can be for anybody there. <laughs> they're sunglasses. <laughs> Unless we get the message out, people are not going to know what's going to happen. Hi, Rhodesia, good to see you. They're not going to know because a lot of people will come in these periscopes and they don't even know anything about the Mark of the Beast. They'll ask what the Mark of the Beast is or what the National Sunday Law is. And it's our responsibility as Christians to tell them. And that's why when they come in my periscopes, I do tell them. I tell them what I know and what I've read in the Bible. And hopefully that they'll get into the Bible and read it for themselves too. Because it's very imperative that people get ready for what's to come. Because it is coming whether we accept it or not, and whether we like it or not, and whether we're ready for it or not. You know, we can be left behind and take the mark of the beast if we're not ready. So we need to get ready. And like I said, give the message and live it too. And I'm talking about myself as well. I need to do this. I need to practice what I preach. You know, I need to live it as well. Um... How do I feel about God? I love God. He is who I live for every day. Yes, it is. 666. Definitely. I love God. And I'm waiting to see him someday. Go to heaven to be with him. And he's who I live for each and every day. And there is a national Sunday law coming. And it is, it is the mark of the beast. But it's in fourth Sunday worship. where Everybody's going to be required to worship on Sunday. And I don't agree with that. Where everybody has to be required... Uh, oh, you know, that that is a shame that they don't, though. You'd think every Adventist should know that, but they don't, apparently. No, Trump is not the Antichrist. The Pope is the Antichrist. The Pope comes out of Europe. Trump does not come out of Europe. You get into your Bible and you read it. That is not biblical to say that Trump is the Antichrist. Other, other people have said the same thing about Obama and Bush and things like that, that they were all Antichrist. They never have been Antichrist. The Pope is the only one that's been the Antichrist. Um, and that, and, that, and that's the thing. People don't understand it. Trump, the, Trump is just the President of the United States. He's just a man. Of course, the Pope is too. But the Pope considers himself a Jesuit first and a Pope second, which means he's a very powerful force to be reckoned with. And if people don't understand what Jesuits are, you need to read up on Jesuits because they're very, very bad people. And he would kill his own people as to even look at them. We know Kennedy was killed by the Jesuits. Lincoln was killed by the Jesuits. So we know how, what if you go against them in any way, um, yeah, he does. He does. And, that, and that's the thing. 
He will kill. He will kill you if you go against him. And, any, and the thing of it is, with with Donald Trump going against the Pope and things that he wants, that's not that's not saying saying much for for him. Although I'm happy he's doing it, but he can find himself on dangerous ground. You you don't oppose the Pope in any way, shape, or form. You need, you know, he expects everybody to bow down to him, and unfortunately, everybody is bowing down to him. The whole world is wandering after the beast right now. They're they're going to church on Sunday. They're following the false doctrines of the Catholic Church, which is which the Protestants have have uh, taken on too, without even realizing that that they are false doctrines. And, and that's the thing: we need to come out of those Sunday keeping churches before it's too late. Because I know there's people that come in here and say, "Well, it doesn't matter what day you keep." But hi, good to see you. Welcome. It does matter what day you keep. It matters very much to God. Because God said in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, he knew that people would forget. And they have forgot. And that's why he, he made the Ten Commandments. Because he wrote them on himself with his own finger. And he expects us to go by everything he says. Because they're not just anything you can, you know, you do anything you want. They are commands. They're like rules of the road. You have to um, follow the rules of the road. You have to follow the commandments as well. And Jesus said in four, John 14, 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. So that what that means is the Sabbath commandment is very important. Because it's going to be the test of our faith at the very, very end. If you aren't, don't have the seal of God, you will have the mark of the beast. There is no sitting on the fence. And there's no middle ground here, <laughs> because you you have to be one or the other. Either you accept God and the Sabbath, or you accept Sunday and the mark of the beast, which is the mark of Satan. You can't you can't uh, say, well, I don't accept either one, because you do. You believe one or the other, you know. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to take the mark of the beast without even realizing what they've done. Well, when they do that, they've automatically sealed their fate, you know. That's why I come in here and do these, because I want people to understand that there's no reason to take the mark of the beast. You should all be willing to have the seal of God, because that seal of God is very important. And if you don't, have, if you don't go to church on Sabbath, and you're going to church on Sunday, when that national Sunday law comes, you will take the mark of the beast. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. That's, that, that is biblical. You will, you will die. You'll have to suffer the seven last plagues. And you will also burn up in hellfire. Uh, he is the beast of the of Revelation 13. There are, there are two beasts in Revelation 13. The first one is is the papacy, which comes out of the sea. The second beast is is a apostate Protestantism, the United States of America. So yes, he is the beast of the Pope. There's the papacy. So he is the papacy. He is part of the papacy. So yes, he is. And the thing of it is, when people worship the beast, they're worshiping, uh, they're worshiping Sunday. That's exactly what it is. You're worshiping Sunday. And you shouldn't have anything to do with Sunday. Sunday is a pagan day. Nobody should be worshiping on Sunday. God never instituted that day for us to worship on. He never told us to worship on Sunday. You know, he says to honor the Sabbath day. But yet people will go to church on Sunday thinking that's the day that they're supposed to keep because they've been doing it for years. Believe me, I was one of those too. But that doesn't make it right. Just because you've been doing it all this time does not make it right. When once I heard the message that I'm telling you after 27 years, I was a little skeptical of it too. I didn't know what to think. But once I heard the message and I realized it was all biblical, I had to accept it. And yes, right, he has deceived the whole world. And the thing of it is, he continues to do it. He continues to deceive the whole world, making the whole world think that what they're doing is all right. You know, because he knows they're not. But that's his way of getting them to go the way he wants them to go. And he's going to take them down with him. And that's the point. If he takes you down with him, he's going to keep you there. And you're not going to be able to come back from it. So we have to be very, very careful not to get involved with Satan's deceivings. And that's the problem. You've got false prophets out there. Oh, oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Uh, Yes, it is, Dolores. It is for everyone. But unfortunately, people will like to say, well, it's only of the Jews. But the Bible never says that. 
Mark 2.27, it says, Man was made for Sabbath, not Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. When, he, when you read that, does it say the Jews only? No, it says Sabbath was made for man, which means all men, Jews and Gentiles alike. The, the Jews, however, have kept the Sabbath from the, test, from the, end of, from the beginning of time. But the, but the sad thing of that is they have kept they are keeping the Sabbath, but they haven't accepted Jesus. They have one but not the other, which is very sad. We need to pray for them. But anyway, if the Jews can keep the Sabbath, why can't the rest of us? It's not that hard to do, and God is never, ever going to ask us to do something that's impossible for us to do. He makes it easy for us to do it if we would just follow him and listen to everything he has to. Hi, Erlene, good to see you. And we have to understand that it's there for everybody. The Sabbath is never going to be done away with because the Sabbath is here to stay. The Sabbath was written on, on tables of stone, the Ten Commandments. And we're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. So you might as well start keeping it now because it will be a lot easier to keep it in heaven if you're keeping it now. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't think that that's true, you know, but... You know, they, why they want to keep Sunday so bad, I don't understand that. Because Sunday has never been the Sabbath. It's, it's been a pagan day. You know, and the Catholics are the ones that instituted Sunday, unfortunately. And they admit it by their authority that they changed the, the day from Sabbath to Sunday. They had no right doing it, but they did it nonetheless. And we shouldn't be following the Catholic Church. The Protestants that are going to church on Sunday, you need to come out of those Sunday-keeping churches. Because all you're doing is you're following the Catholic in every which way, shape, and form. You're following them as far as their false doctrines, the day of worship, and everything else that the Catholics have instituted. You don't need to listen to the Catholic Church. They're going to take you down. And a lot of these false prophets who go to church on Sunday are going to do the same thing. They're not, they're not telling you the truth either. They, they think they are, but they're not. They're deceiving you. And you don't, well, you don't have to be. You don't have to be to accept the Sabbath. I'm a spiritual Jew. The Sunday keepers need to come out of the Sunday keeping churches. I'm telling you right now. Sunday is not going to save you. I'm not saying Sabbath is going to save me either. But I'm keeping the Sabbath because I am saved, not to be saved. And Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. All ten of them. Not just, not, not just the nine and, and then disregard the fourth one. Because that's what a lot of people do. Well, I'm, I'm under the, I'll keep the other nine. But when it comes to the fourth commandment, I don't want to keep that one. Why? It's just as important as the others, the other nine. Even more so because it has to do with the day of the week. I know a lot of people say, well, the day doesn't really matter. Try telling God that. Don't tell God that it doesn't matter what day you, t you keep because it most certainly does. He would never have said, remember the Sabbath day to keep holy if, if it wasn't important to him. And that's the thing because that is the only thing of the entire Bible that God wrote with his own finger was the Ten Commandments. No, he didn't trust anybody else to write them. Nobody else wrote them but him. The rest of the Bible was inspired by God. But that was the only thing, like I said, that he took upon himself to write. And yet people to this day still don't accept the Ten Commandments. You know, they like to say, well, they were done away with at the cross. They were not done away with at the cross. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Hi, Tasha. Good to see you. And yet people like to say, well, it... You know, we're not, we're not under the law now, we're under the grace. We're not under the condemnation of the law. You don't understand that. We are under grace, but we're not under the condemnation of the law. We're still under the law and grace. There, there's, there, that's just the point. People like to come back and say we're not under law, but under grace. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Oh, hi, good to see you. Blessings to you, too. And the thing of it is, people like to, like to say the Sabbath doesn't matter. But I'm here to tell you, it very much does matter. If you want to, if you want to take the seal of God or have the seal of God at the end time when that national Sunday law comes, you better be sealed with by seal of God. Because if you're not, you're automatically lost, and you'll go by the way of the mark of the beast. And I don't want that for anybody, because there's enough people that are going to be taking the mark of the beast as it is. Not everybody needs to do that. And, and the trouble is, Satan is going to come along and tell you, oh, continue to do what you're doing. Go to church on Sunday. It doesn't really matter. You know, God's going to save you anyway. Uh, granted, there will be some Sunday keepers saved. And that's all because they never heard this message. They didn't know it. You're only held accountable for what you know. Hi, Philip. You're only held accountable for what you know. And if you don't know something, God's not going to hold you accountable for it. But if you do know it and you refuse to do it, then... 
That's where you, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Blessings to you, Philip. I, I watched your periscope this morning. It was beautiful. Thank you. And that, that's the thing. People just don't understand that the Sabbath is very important. You can't throw it out like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You can't do that at all. Because you, if you're not sta- not standing true to God in the Sabbath, then you must be standing up for Satan. And that's exactly what... Hi, Carrie. Good to see you. That's exactly what what Satan is hoping. That you'll stand up for him when it comes to that time. And you'll take the mark of the beast. Because you know we all know that he's out to destroy the world. He wants to take the world down with him. If he can take as many down with him as he can, he's happy. Oh, thank you, Pop. Carrie, good to you. <coughs> Blessings to you, too. And, oh, hi from Iraq. Welcome. Um, hi, Erlene. And the thing of it is, good to see you. And the thing of it is, people think that that Sabbath is an all... <coughs> isn't as important as it is, but we need to understand it's very important. Uh, oh, you're so very welcome. I I decided to do this this morning because I haven't done one in a while. And uh, we need to get this message out. Like I said, we need to give it and we need to live it. I'm talking about myself too because I have to live it just like I'm telling everybody else to do it, you know. No, they don't. Aborted babies don't. No. You don't understand. There, there is no such thing as heaven or hell when you die. You don't go to heaven when you die, you don't go to hell when you die. The reason you don't, that is because that's not biblical. Um, the thing of it is, you're believing that very lie that Satan told in the Garden of Eden when he told Adam and Eve they were going to be like gods and live forever, which is not true. They're not going to be like gods and live forever. Because God told them what would happen if they partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's how sin got started. They didn't, they didn't obey God and they followed Satan. He tempted them and they listened. <coughs> But putting people into heaven when they die you go into your grave you wait one of the two resurrections you don't understand when when Adam was created Adam and Eve were created they were they were given the breath of life they became a living soul don't you wake up every morning and breathe it's only because of God's Holy Spirit and Jesus that you're even here you go into your grave the only thing that goes back to God is your breath of life that's it you wait one of the two resurrections your physical body's in the grave, but your breath of life goes back to God. And there is no such thing as, as hell right now either. It's going to be coming, but it isn't on this earth yet. Because we're, that is not until after Jesus comes back. We have, a, we have a thousand years of peace after Jesus comes back. Where the only one that will be on this earth will be Satan. And he will be, he'll be in torment more or less. Because he'll be in a dark earth. It'll be pitch black. And he won't have anybody to tempt because... The wicked will be on the ground slain by the brightness of Jesus coming, and the righteous will be in heaven with, with Jesus. And he's, he's going to have a thousand years to think about what he has done on this earth. It's not going to change him, though. Uh, what happens when you die? You go into your grave. Jesus called, Jesus called death a sleep. That's all you're doing is just sleeping. You know, you don't, you, but you cease to exist as far as breathing. Your breath of life goes back to God. You cannot, you, you're not breathing anymore. As long as you're alive and breathing, you're, you're, uh, yeah, Satan's time is about up. You're right. But I want you to understand. And I'm glad you asked that question because a lot of people don't understand. You have been taught by your pastors that your soul goes to heaven and hell when you die. Please get into the word of God and read it for yourself to, to know, because I don't want you believing a false doctrine. That's the, that's the thing. They, they're in false doctrine and they're keeping their congregations in darkness they're not willing to tell them the truth and you need to hear the truth and that's why I'm doing this I want you to hear the truth I want you to understand that when you die you go into your grave you, you'll wait one of the two resurrections either the resurrection of the righteous at Jesus second coming no no you're not conscious when you die you're when you, when you die, you're the, what goes back to God is your breath of life. You're asleep. You do not know what, what's, what's happening. Get in the book of, of Ecclesiastes. Read chapter 9, uh, verse 5, where it talks about, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Read that verse and see what it tells you. It's telling you exactly what I'm telling you. They're not conscious. They do not know what's going on around them. The time for them has ceased. You don't understand that. When you go in, when you die, time has stopped. And those that have have died in Jesus 
when Jesus comes back again, it'll be just like a moment in time for them. Like it was just, they had just died and then they were resurrected. That's how it's going to be. Just a moment in time. Your thoughts perish. You do not know anything. So when your pastors tell you you're up in heaven looking down on your loved ones, which I was told about my mother, that is not true. Do not believe it. Get into the word of God and read it for yourself to know. Because you've got to study to show yourself approved. If you don't get into the word of God, you're, ne you're never going to know. Yes, he was a Jew. Yes, he was. Uh, yes, Jesus, well, you get into 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, where it talks about the Jesus' second coming and the, and the resurrection, where it talks about um, when he'll come with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we which are alive will go after that. So that's exactly how it's going to happen. But get into the, get into the Bible and read it, because I want you to understand, his second coming is literal, visible, and audible, because he's coming with a shout, the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of the archangel. That is not secret. I know a lot of people talk about the secret rapture, but there's nothing secret about that at all. You know, that's another false doctrine of the Catholic Church. They have many false doctrines that they've purported throughout the years, and unfortunately, the whole world is, is following those false doctrines. Uh, the thing of it is, you don't understand, yeah, the thing when, if you're going to preach people into heaven when they die, then why would Jesus even have to come back? Who's he coming back for? Think about it. Who in the world is he coming back for if everybody's in heaven when, when they die? He's, there's no reason for him to come back. They're already there because you're, we're going, because when Jesus comes back, he's coming to take his people to heaven with him. So if we're already there, he doesn't need to come back. And that's what people need to, people need to understand that. It makes no sense to say that you go to heaven when you die. <laughs> then you're, then you're, then you're calling Jesus a liar and things like that. And you don't understand. You, the Bible says he's coming back again. And the Bible does not say anything about that we go to heaven when we die. You won't find it anywhere in the Bible. I said, just read to you or talk, told you about Ecclesiastes 9, 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Their thoughts perish. They don't know. The time for them has ceased. When you go and when you die, that's it. You don't know what's happening the next day, the day after that or anything. Because you, for you, the time is over. Your life on earth is done. You do not know anything. So that's what I'm, how I'm trying to explain it to you, that that you don't know anything. You go into your grave, you're asleep until Jesus comes, either one of the two resurrections, either the resurrection of the righteous at his second coming or, or the resurrection of the wicked after the thousand years. Uh, well, we don't know when that's going to be. We don't know. The second coming is very, very soon. But we have things we have to go through first. You have to, and if you're um, thinking that there's a rapture, and you don't have to go through the tribulation. That's not biblical because we do have to go through the tribulation because Jesus said so in the Bible. He talks about that because that's the mark of the beast where we're all going to, you know, be here. Some are going to die for the faith and some are not. But we're all going to um, be here during the during the time of trouble. That's what they call it, the time of trouble. You remember during the time of, of Israel when they were in Egypt. They were there for the plagues that, that affected the the uh, Egyptians, however, they didn't have to go. They di they didn't fall on them because they had put blood on the door. It's going to be the same way with us. They're not the the plagues are not going to fall on us, but yet we're going to be here to see what's going on. We're going to see the the wicked uh, being affected by that by the plagues, and that's going to be very hard, especially. Uh, oh man, no, he doesn't. He does no no no. That's true. That's wrong. Oh, that's so sad. Jesus doesn't hate anybody. If that person hates you, then just block them. You know, because, yeah, that was Satan. Exactly. Exactly, Philip. That was Satan. You know what that person had? That person has Satan in them. You know, I'm sorry I missed that. I'm sorry I missed that comment, Philip. But when I get, when I stop this periscope and I watch the replay, I will take care of the comments that I didn't catch. And I will, I will block them. Then they will not be allowed to come back in here. I'm sorry that happened, Philip. But you know, when somebody says something like that, you just pray for them because you know where their mind's at. Satan is telling them that because Satan doesn't love anybody. I don't think he even loves himself. 
it's obvious that he doesn't love anybody because he's trying to destroy the whole world. If he can get the whole world to go where he's going, because he knows where his, where his fate is. And he wants everybody to go where he's going. And unfortunately, a lot of people, hi, Lisa, good to see you. A lot of people are going to go where Satan's going. We know that at the end, during the, um, the fiery, uh, the hellfire, that the, the wicked are going to encompass the whole earth. And can you imagine how, how big that's going to be, how many people that's going to be to encompass? i got to watch that watch for my dogs. Uh, the whole earth, that's a lot of people being destroyed. Uh, yes, they are being used by the enemy, and he will do that. I know I get people in this periscope that are very mean and derogatory. Just pray for those people. They don't know what they're doing. Satan's got them ensnared. And if they only realized that they were ensnared by Satan, then... then and they're being told they're ensnared by Satan. If they realize it, maybe they wouldn't want to do it. But he's got them so take, so bewildered and so deceived that they're going to believe anything they hear. Uh, yeah, that's right. They hated Jesus first, exactly. Yeah, we have to pray for them. Because if we don't pray for them, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And the thing of it is, when you pray for somebody, just leave it to the Holy Spirit. Just leave it in his hands. Let him take care of it. You know, we sow the seed, we pray for them, let God take care of the rest, because He will, you know, He will do what's, what's, what needs to get done, you know. And we know that there's a lot of people that aren't going to accept the truth. We understand that. That's just the way it is. They aren't going to accept the truth, unfortunately, but we have to try to get the truth out as much as we can. And that's our, that's our job, is, to, is the Great Commission, is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But the problem of it is, a lot of us aren't doing it. We're not getting this message out like we need to. This is prophecy. A lot of people consider it gloom and doom. They don't want to hear about prophecy because it, it doesn't, it's not prosperity. But I'm not into prosperity because I know there is no such thing. We, we, we have to accept that. There is no such thing as prosperity. If people want to accept prosperity, then that's up to them because I don't accept prosperity, you know, because I know that prosperity isn't going to get me anywhere, you know. We have to be ready for what's coming. And what was, what's coming is gloom and doom. It is gloom and doom for a lot of people. Unless they're, unless they're on the side of Jesus, they're not going to be prepared for what's happening, and they're going to take the mark of the beast. We need to all get into the Bible. I know there's going to be some people in here that, that may have never got into the Bible before, and I implore you, get into the Word of God, because it is our sure word. It is our standard, the, what we live by. And... Here, girls, go. I'm going to let my dogs in. It's the standard by what we live by. Go on, Sarah. Go on. And it's our standard. And we need to we need to do what we can to... Hi. Good to see you, Lisa. Good to see you. I'm sorry about my dogs barking. Hi, Ebony. Good to see you. I'm going to stand out here for a little bit and, and talk to you. But people don't understand that it's very, very important. They accept Jesus. They accept what he has to offer. Because if they don't, they're not going to be ready when he comes. And unfortunately, a lot of people have turned their back on God over the years. They just continue to turn their back on God. They they don't think they have to accept Him. Hi, happy feet, good to see you. But we do. We have to accept Him. And I don't know why people don't want to accept Him. I find my life a lot more complete when I've accepted Him. Oh, good to see you too, Ebony. And, you know, I don't, I don't know where I would be without God in my life. Because without God in my life, I'd be nowhere. You know, God is, is so important to me. He's, he's blessed me in many, many ways. And I, while I'm on this periscope, I'll tell you about yesterday. Yesterday I had to go to bankruptcy court again. And uh, I knew that I wouldn't have any problem because the lawyer would be there for me. And he was. And I told him, I says, well, I hope the lawyer doesn't, uh, or the, the judge doesn't dismiss my case. He says, oh, no, he won't. And believe me, when he got up there, he explained everything that was going on. And the, and the judge is, is letting my case go through. I have another another a court hearing in July, the end of July, July 25th. But, you know, I knew it would turn out that way. I prayed about it, and I've got a very good lawyer. He, he stood there for me and, and talked about it, about what's happening and things. And he's on my side. You know, and I know Jesus is on my side, too. It wouldn't, If it weren't for Jesus, it wouldn't have. Oh, thank you, Philip, because I need all the prayers I can get, because I'm not through this yet. I've still got a ways to go. And the thing of it is, what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to get a lawsuit going where he can, where he's going to get my, my sale set aside where I can get my house back, and I want you to pray for me on this too, that I will get my house back, I will be able to sell it, 
and get a house out in the country, a trailer out in the country, because I'm not exactly in the country here. There's houses around. It's as somewhat in the country, but not completely. So I need to I need to have prayer that the Lord will intervene. That I will get this house sold because I'm going to sell it as is. I hope I get enough money out of it to buy a trailer and go out into the country and and survive out there. Maybe I can make my own, have, have my own garden and everything because that's exactly what I want to do. You know, because we know we're going to have to grow our own food. Uh, no, the chips aren't involved. You don't understand. The mark of the beast is not a chip. It's symbolic. It's what you think to do in, in your mind and what you do with your hand. It might might lead to it, however, but the chip is not the mark of the beast. Not at all. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. I need all the prayers I can get. And I'll pray for each and every one of you, too. Because, you know, we're all going to go through trials. And if, if we can't get through these trials now, how are we going to get through the time of trouble? You know, and I know that they're here to strengthen me. Um, yeah, we all need to get out in the country, you know. And that's my daughter-in-law kind of wants me to go out and live close to them because they're out in the, way out in the boons, boondocks. They're out in the sticks. But it's beautiful country where they're at out there. And uh, I wouldn't mind being out there, you know, if I can if I can have somebody close by me. And they said they'll help me as much as they can to help me find a place and everything. You know, in fact, this house I'm living in now, they helped me find this one. But they'll take me around to help me find a trailer and stuff. You know, they're real good that way. So just keep that in prayer that... Well, I'll get this house back and I'll be able to uh, sell it and uh, have enough money to to get a trailer and have extra money maybe and get some of my bankruptcy taken care of because I, I need to get out of debt. I don't want this bankruptcy hanging over my head when Jesus comes back. We need to get our financial, our life in order and that's exactly what I need to do. Get my life in order and get everything taken care of so that I'll be prepared when Jesus comes. When is the Mark of the Beast coming? We do not know. Um, it could come any time. It's, it's right around the corner because things are happening. So, and it makes you wonder every day. It's getting closer and closer and closer each and every day. Oh, yes, we have to pray for everybody. I'm sorry, my dogs are barking. And that's the thing. You, you probably hear them in the background. They're in the house. But anyway, we need to, we need to stay close to Jesus. All the, yeah, thank you. I, I do need prayers. We all need prayer. Um, very much so. We need prayer very much. Maybe I better go out in the yard because they're barking. You won't hear them. That we all need prayer, especially me. I need prayer a lot because, uh, yeah, that's in the works, the mark of the beast. You're right. The mark of the beast is right around the corner. It's very, very soon. And, oh, if you worship Satan, I feel for you. I'll pray for you because you worshiping Satan like that. You know what's going to happen to you? You're lost. You're going exactly where Satan's going. And if you don't want to go to heaven, um, Satan is your, I'm sorry, he's not your savior. Oh, my goodness. I think I, I, think I, better, I be, better escort you out of here. Goodbye. Uh, we have to pray for that person. Eddie Rocks, whoever that person is, we have to, we have, we have to pray for that person. Uh, no, no, it's not. No, the mark of the beast is not a chip. It's symbolic. A lot of people think it's a chip. You don't understand. It's, it's Sunday worship. It is Sunday worship. If you're going to church on Sunday, when that national Sunday law is enforced, you will be taking the mark of the beast. And well, you, if you don't want to worship Satan, then it's best to come out of the Sunday-keeping churches because if, you, if you're going to church on Sunday, and you're, then you actually are worshiping Satan. You're not actually worshiping God when you go to church on Sunday. You're worshiping the Pope. You're not worshiping God at all because you're going in direct defiance of God's law. You're doing your own thing. You're doing what you want to do and not what God said you should do. Uh, that's right. That's exactly right. It's symbolism. It's symbolic. But people yet are looking for the chip. Sure, we have we have chips in our phones, in our credit cards, and all. Just about everything has chips in it. But that is, does not mean that it's the mark of the beast because it's not. The mark of the beast is the papacy. It's an enforced Sunday worship. You, you should not be going to church on Sunday and honoring the papacy because that's what a lot of people are doing now, honoring the papacy. You know, you're, you, you know, like I said, if the if the Pope jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, would you go after him? A lot of people, I'm afraid, would. They'd go in the they'd go in the water and save him. You know that I will say one thing though: the Pope does need to be saved. However, we know he's not going to be saved. We have to pray for him anyway. Yeah, I do too. I hope they pray for. Yes, I hope so too. We got we got that people will find God before it's too late, and that's the thing. <laughs> You don't understand. The chip is not the mark of the beast. It's symbolism. It's Sunday worship. It's who are you going to who are you going to worship? Are you going to worship God and take the seal of God, which is the Sabbath, or are you going to worship Satan and take Sunday? That's what I'm saying. Are you going to are you going to do that? Because actually, in essence, when you go to church on Sunday, you're not really worshiping God, not honoring God. You're going against God. 
because he didn't command us to go to church on Sunday. You will not find it anywhere in the Bible where he says to go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. Yet the pastors will make you believe that's exactly why you go to church on Sunday. That is not biblical. It's all about worship. Either you worship on the Sabbath and take the seal of God, or you worship on Sunday and take the mark of the beast. There is no turning back. Once you take the mark of the beast, you are lost. So I come, I tell, am telling everybody in here that it goes to church on Sunday. Please find a Sabbath-keeping church now before that comes because I don't want you to take the mark of the beast. That's not necessary. People should not do that. So get into your Bibles and read them because if you don't, you're never going to know what's going to happen. And that's, I want people to understand that. The mark of the beast is very serious. We're in perilous times now, and it's coming whether you're ready for it or not. But the one way to be ready is to get into your Bible, study it, know exactly what's going to happen. I would, re I would recommend those that don't know anything about the mark of the beast, get into, the, into Revelation chapter 13 and read that. That's right. He did do ministry on the Sabbath, but he didn't do bad. He did good things on the Sabbath. He preached on the Sabbath. That's exactly. It was it was Saturday, not Sunday. Sunday is not biblical. It never has been. So please, it would, if I implore you, by all means, come out of those Sunday keeping churches. I don't want anybody lost. I don't want you taking the mark of the beast because you're going to church on Sunday. It's not necessary. It's, it's unfortunate that people do that. You know. Yeah, it does. You know, and I read my Bible every morning. And the mornings that I skip, I have to go back, you know, I'll go back and read those passages. Uh, it does matter. You're telling God it doesn't matter. God said in, this, in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You're telling God it doesn't really matter. Why would God say, remember the Sabbath day if it didn't matter? He wouldn't have said that at all. He said, remember because he knew the world would forget. And lo and behold, they have forgot. They're doing their own thing. You're going, doing your own thing by going to church on Sunday, and it's very sad. You should not be going to church on Sunday. You need to come out of those Sunday-keeping churches because, in essence, when, you, um, when you're going to church on Sunday, you're not a true Protestant. Don't say you are because all you are are daughters of the Catholic Church. To come out of church, or if you come out of the Sunday keeping churches, you become a true Protestant. But as long as you're in, ch in Sunday keeping churches and following them every way, the false doctrines, you are not Protestants. You are Catholics. You might as well call yourself a Catholic, and and it's it's sad, but that's the way it is. You know, Protestant means protest. You're not protesting anything. You're following the Catholic Church every way that you can and it's time that you stop following that catholic church because they're going to take you down they're going to take you down with them i'm going to tell you this though i love the catholic people they're very good people it's a system that's very corrupt there's going to be a lot of catholics saved however in the very end because they have never been told the truth and the people that haven't been told the truth they're that they're not being held accountable for that uh, no we don't feel that at all there's good people from all denominations saved but there's people from all denominations that are going to be lost, too. We do not believe, because we're Seventh-day Adventists, that we're the only ones saved. People have said that over and over again, but that is not true. We have never believed that. We believe that, that we are going to be saved, but there's also a lot of Adventists that are going to be lost, too. As well as people from other denominations that are going to be lost. But there's going to be people from all churches saved. We're not the only ones. We believe the Catholics are going to be saved. That there may be some Jews that will come accept Jesus before that's too, before the time is over too. They'll accept Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses. Every one of those will accept will accept Jesus and do it and come out come out of the Sunday keeping churches and 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 honor the Sabbath. We believe that people from all churches. So I want you to understand that. Just because we're Seventh-day Adventists does not give us a ticket to heaven that we're the only ones saved because that is so wrong. And don't don't think that, that because you are saved that you can do anything you want and God will automatically take you to heaven. The Bible the Bible does not say that because there is no once saved, always always saved. People have a tendency to believe that. That they, they once, well, I'm saved, I can do anything I want. That's not biblical because you can have your name blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life as as quick as it was put in there. So remember that. Don't have your names written out if, if, if at all possible, please. Um, people if they accept Jesus on Sunday, it's because they have not been told about the Sabbath. That's what I'm telling you. Their people will be saved because they have never heard about the Sabbath. But I will tell you this. Once you've heard about the Sabbath and you turn your back on it and refuse to do it, 
Then Jesus said, There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Then you are lost because you have grieved away the Holy Spirit. You've turned your back on Jesus and you've turned your back on the Holy Spirit. So when you hear the truth in here, I implore you, get into the Word of God and read it. I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to get into the Bible and see if what I said is true. Because if anything I said is not true, then I would be a false prophet and a liar. But I know what I've said is true. But get into the Word of God and study it for yourself so that you know that what I'm saying is the truth. And and, and that, yes, you have to. Yes, we have to do our hardest to be saved. Stay saved. Exactly. We don't want to lose our salvation. I don't want any of you to lose your salvation. But unfortunately, it's going to happen because people get a swelled head and they're in their sin and they think they can continue to sin over and over and over again. And God's going to uh, let that happen. He's not. He's only, He's going to not strive with you forever. Um, I'm not saying that they haven't, but the thing that is, I'm telling you that they have not they have not heard about the Sabbath. And once you hear about the Sabbath, you need to come out of the Sunday keeping churches. I did. Once I heard that the, the Saturday was the Sabbath, I came out of the Sunday keeping churches and I have never gone back. Once you hear the truth, you need to accept the truth because that's what I'm saying. It's very dangerous if you don't. If you turn your back on the truth, then, you, then God is going to deal with you on that. So please... <laughs> You need to come out of those Sunday-keeping churches because, like I said, the Bible says, the truth shall set you free. That's my mantra in here. The truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth, and it shall set you free. So please, don't don't stay in those Sunday-keeping churches. Come out before it's too late because there's coming a day when you'll wish you had. Um, yes, it is. It is the very first day of the week. It's not the first work day, however, but it is the very first day of the week. And that's what I'm saying. There's nothing in the Bible that says Sunday is, is to be honored because of, of the resurrection. You will not find that anywhere. Jesus never told us to honor him because of his resurrection. Um, well, that you don't understand. That's not the mark of the beast. We're not into the mark of the beast right now. There, nobody has the mark of the beast yet because it hasn't been enforced. You don't know, understand what the National Sunday Law is. It's enforced Sunday worship. There are blue laws on the, on the books right now. They are not enforced yet. But once they are enforced, then we will be into the National Sunday Law. And that's right around the corner. Um, that's right. He rested the he rested the seventh day. He worked six days. He made the world in six literal days and rested on the seventh. Not because he was tired, but to set it as an example for us. So if he rested on the seventh day, why can't we do the same thing? Um, and that's the thing. I want people to understand that. The Sabbath is very important. It's not going to save you per se, not without Jesus. You can't be saved without Jesus, of course. But you must accept the Sabbath before it's too late. I don't want you to be, be going to church on Sunday and that national Sunday law comes and then you, you're still in Sunday and you, you're lost because it's not necessary. People should not be taking the mark of the beast. Don't give Satan the benefit of the doubt because that's what you're doing. You're giving him the benefit of the doubt and, and giving him what he wants. And I'll, we, none of us should want to give Satan what he wants. Yes, it is. The Sabbath is on Saturday. Correct. You've got it right. And I'm glad you... Um, that's right. God will provide for his children. You know, he said our bread and water will be sure. We may have to flee for our lives. We, you know, we may, will be, have a death decree on our head because we're Sabbath keepers. We're going to be the very first ones that have a death decree on our head. We're going to have to flee, some of us. Some of us are going to be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to have to die for our faith. Are we willing to do that? I hope we are. Look what Jesus did for us. Are we any better than Jesus? I would think not. I mean, after all, he gave his life for us, you know. He didn't have to, but he did. He gave his life for us. So we should be willing to give our life for him. <clears throat> so I think I'll, I'll end this periscope with my song. I'm standing outside, but I'm hoping and praying that people will hear me. And I'm <clears throat> saying my song, and then I'll, I'll end this periscope. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us all be a sanctuary for Jesus. And as the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I thank you all for coming in and supporting me, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. I hope you all have a great day, wherever you might be. Take care, God bless, and bye-bye.